Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Ellie's Book Review. Today we're going to look at Silas Marner by George Eliot. Now, it's interesting, George Eliot is actually uh, a pen name for uh, Marianne Evans, who uh, decided to choose uh, this uh, male uh, identified name in order to get recognition for her novel and the novels that follow. Now, Silas Marner is a story of a man, uh, quite complicated, a very complex character. Silas Marner himself, that we might regard as the leading character, is actually not the leading character. The leading character is a man known as Godfrey Cass, that is introduced later on in the story. The opening of the story deals with Silas Marner and this man being innocent, at least that's what it seems, uh, and being accused, falsely accused, by um, his best friend William and uh, his, uh, who had, might have conspired with his wife, uh, in, engaged to be fiancé, Sarah. And so he leaves this village and, and, and uh, finds himself with a new life. Uh, he's of course a weaver and he's trying to struggle uh, through life. Uh, in a very difficult way and, and that brings us to the theme of the story it seems that the theme is uh, consequences of our actions and, and how the lack of responsibility would have consequences that are not in our hands and sometimes we blame destiny and we hope for the best but in reality what happens is that there is no one to blame except us now how this theme is actually constructed is through a paradigm of three key characters, one being, uh, being uh, Silas Marner himself, the other uh, being Godfrey's uh, father, Squire, and Godfrey's uh, uh, wife, Nancy. Now, what is very interesting here is that uh, the leading character being this man, Godfrey, who lives a very luxurious lifestyle, who has a very rich father. Of course, this is a man of uh, authority. This is a man who uh, is trying so hard to discipline his two sons, one being Godfrey and the other one being Dunstan, and Dunstan being the rebellious one because he's the one that uh, actually uh, loses uh, his brother's money, threatens to uh, talk about his scandal, uh, his um, unknown marriage to this woman, Molly, from a very, very different class in, in a society that is ruled by Class, and it's very difficult for someone to go uh, to go uh, beyond the border of those classes, and, and, and uh, uh, we know that from Jane Austen's uh, *Pride and Prejudice*. That, that is uh, unheard of when, when you belong to one class, to one caste. You the, the others are untouchables, and so um, what happens with Godfrey is that. He has married one untouchable by the name of Molly, and he does have a daughter that he chooses to deny, and he chooses to keep it in secret, and that becomes the inner complication of our story. Uh, the outer complication being the, the, the question of what is he going to do with his daughter, especially after Molly uh, is frozen in the snow and, and uh, Silas Marner finds this girl uh, by the name of Epi, he names her. And what is interesting is that how would uh, Godfrey react to this? Now this is uh, Silas Marner, the man whose all 15 years of earning was stolen by uh, Godfrey's brother Dunstan. Dunstan is nowhere to be found and so uh, this man uh, Silas Marner has lost the gold but has now gained a child and he sees this child as the beacon of hope. Uh, he sees this child as, 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 as a glimpse of uh, a twilight, if you will, a twinkling of light in the dark abyss of our world. He sees that because his life has been such a tragedy and now he can see that maybe the God that he denied at the beginning of the story, who does not uh, have justice and uh, would allow the innocent to go uh, be prosecuted, although they are innocent, is now faced with a glimpse of regaining back his faith. 
And that's what makes the story so interesting. Is the struggle that one man has of denying his lawful righteous responsibilities, being God free, uh, trying to deny the existence of his daughter uh, because he wants to marry Nancy and he wants the marriage to be perfect. And ironically, uh, the climax of the story is when uh, Nancy is unable to deliver their child and the child is aborted. And, and that abortion not only affects and breaks down uh, their father square, but also uh, that conversation that he has with uh, Silas Martyr is quite significant, where he says, I guess we both will never have grandsons and uh, grandchild. And, and it's interesting because uh, there is an irony in it, because at that time, Silas Martyr actually does have a daughter. It's not his daughter, but uh, he has every right to believe that this could likely be uh, his daughter in the years to come. And that's exactly what happens by the ending. Uh, after that um, dramatic meeting where finally uh, Godfrey um, acknowledges the fact that uh, he, he needs to come forward and, and be honest with not only Nancy but also ultimately taking Nancy to the humble home of uh, Silas Marner and, and, and seeing his own daughter and, and telling her that I did uh, abandon you and I did leave you behind and, and, and uh, I want you to come back and face the possibility of rejection and inevitably he is rejected and, and that rejection uh, uh, gives us such sympathy. I mean, uh, I personally sympathize with uh, Godfrey a great deal because I can see when when when, when a father uh, brings himself down to a point, uh, uh, brings him de descends himself to, to such a point for the one he loves, being his own child, and so and so you have to give uh, Godfrey the credit, uh, and although his brother is clearly. Uh, now we know that he's dead and he was the one who stole the money. And it's interesting that all, not only the money is returned, but also when faced with the question, Epi says, says, I don't want, uh, the only father I've known all these years is Silas Marner. I cannot have two fathers and I cannot love two fathers. And it's absurd to ask me to come to uh, the mansion and then come and visit my dad. This is my dad. I. I had my laughters with him, I cried with him, and I, I, I believe uh, in, in the family that we have together. And that moment, uh, we think back to the opening of the story where Silas Marner lost his faith. And he believed that God uh, might not be out there to save him. Uh, it's interesting that by the end of the story, we see that... Uh, God is out there, and, 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 and it seems that um, although uh, George Eliot or uh, Marianne Evans herself did go through a very difficult childhood, did spend some time in a convent where she was, in a way, um, bombarded with religious ideology, she lived in the 19th century, where it was the period of transcendentalists in the U.S., she being in England, of course, going through a lot of changes. Uh, it's interesting that, you know, um, she um, had this relationship with the philosopher and uh, the famous writer himself, uh, George Henry Lewis. And, uh, of course, later on she married John Cross, but uh, George Henry had a lot of influence on her and her ideology in rejecting this paradigm of uh, religious ideology that lived Europe on Europe for a thousand years. It was, uh, it was always what God has destined for you and not what you decide to do. And so, although she had gone through this, and, and although you know that she belongs to a period of uh, rebellious ideology when it comes to the church and the religion, as a whole. But it's interesting that in this novel there is that glimpse 
of, of, of hope left for Silas Marner that that maybe God is on our side and and so he does not uh, leave uh, the innocent uh, to be prosecuted unjustly and, and on the contrary not only Dunstan faced justice that he deserved no matter what Godfrey did, at the end of the day, he had to face the consequences of his actions. And no matter how bitter they tasted, he had to uh, face the music. And ironically, uh, the miserable Silas Martyr himself, who it seemed should have lost all hope and all possible faith, uh, was given not only his... 15 years of gold back, but also he was given something much more precious than gold. He was given a daughter that he could call his own and would grow up to be his own. And on that note, uh, I end the book review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, you can leave and I'll be more than happy to respond.